Welcome to a seven-part devotional entitled Fervent Hope in the Tragic Times. Every day, we will be uncovering one tragic natural disaster that affects human existence. Most of these are happening in our vicinity. That is why there, these are not new to us. Together with this, let us uncover God's truths embedded within. Today, we can attest that the number of natural disasters that visit our locality did not only double or triple in the last decade, but it even went up five times. Thus, today, there is never a month without a natural tragic disaster taking place. So in our new devotional series, we will have fervent hope Amidst these critical times, times we surely know as signs of God's nearing soon return. Fervent is an acronym that we will uncover every day in our newest devotional series under the 7 Minutes with God Inspirational Devotional, a production of Jervin Eagle Ministries. Joining you every night is your humble online inspirational evangelist, Brother Noy Gonzaga, and it is time now to uncover God's message of fervent hope in these tragic times. Today, let us uncover first E in the acronym FERVENT, and that stands for EARTHQUAKES. Our verse for meditation is found in Revelation 11 verse 13. And it says, And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. At this moment, shall we first recognize Jesus, the greatest teacher in our midst through prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, this very moment, we would like to thank Thee for being in our midst, especially as we study about the tragic times and the fervent hope. May it be, Lord, that You will commune with us, guide us, especially as we will study the natural disaster earthquake, not only in this world, but in our lives. May it be, Lord, that You will Give us lessons beyond these calamities. May thy name be glorified. In the loving name of Jesus we pray. Amen. It was midday, middle of July, year 2016, when everything seemed to be normal, and all of a sudden, a very strong force rocked the Bacolod city vicinity, of which the vibration is enough to promote dizziness. I was able to withhold standing in the school, but some of my grade 6 classmates fall from their chairs and some vomited because it was a very long duration of a shackle. The incident was close to 10 minutes and everything went back to normal. Yes, there was an earthquake. I went home lunchtime and my cousin is watching TV and I was amazed by the reality that an earthquake simultaneously occurred within the whole country. And what happened in the school just a few hours ago happened only as a sideswept of the real earthquake of which the epicenter is in Nueva Vizcaya, Philippines. However, that 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake, one of the strongest to hit Philippines, killed 1,621 people. It was a fearful experience in school, but a tragic experience in the whole of northern Luzon region in the Philippines. Weeks passed, and people are still talking about the effect of this quake. While glancing at the news, I found one news item that, uh, that amused me a lot. The longest living survivor survived for 14 days under the rubbles of one fallen hotel in Baguio City, and he was able to survive drinking his own urine. At times, if lucky, raindrops may reach him. The name of this person is Pedrito D. 
and he is a fitness instructor in Baguio City during the time in 2016. When asked what kept him alive even without proper nourishment and even liquid inputs, Pedrito said, There was a hole from the rubbles on top, the only hole where I can see the light. As days turn and pass by, I wait for each day by focusing on that hole if light will still appear. While waiting for that light to reach me through that hole, I can only do one thing, and that is hope for the light to appear. Often, I almost lost hope and asked God to end my suffering and my life because it is nearly impossible that I will still be rescued. These are the direct sentiments of Bidretu while interviewed months after the tragic incident. As for the greatest lesson he learned from that earthquake that pulverized the Hyatt Hotel in Baguio City during that great quake in 2016, wherein he was trapped, he said, I learned to believe in H-O-P-E, or that is hope. Pedrito lived each heartbeat with hope that someone, somebody, or something will come together with that light in the hole to rescue him and give him another lease to live a happier life. During that span of 14 days, Pedrito tried to commit suicide by bumping his head on the stones in the rubble where he was trapped. But every time he sees the light in the hole, hope flourished in his heart. It was this hope that encouraged him to pray with utmost concentration, undistracted and heavily focused to God. It was this hope that unknowingly let him execute five hours of continuous praying and then rest and then five hours of continuous praying again. It was this hope that made him far from human help yet nearer to God in those moments. It was this hope that led him to still shout during the 14th day under the heavy rubbles. When he noticed moving figures and on that day he was rescued. Although with severe electrolyte and fluid imbalance, yet corrected by medical augmentation, and proper nutritional infusion by experts who were as happy that they have still saved a life after 14 days, quite an impossibility that is proven possible. Yes, dear friends, there might be situation, emotional, mental, and even spiritual earthquakes that will happen in our lives. At times, this might be tolerable. But there will be moments that this will be anesthetizing and numbing. That we may feel and we may expect and may we, may we want that this will be over. However, God may have permitted such an experience to happen to us because He wants us not to lose hope. He wants us to connote hope with faith and that there is a God that will make the impossible very possible. Without hope, there is a great tendency that humanity will give up and will forget that their Lord is stronger than the strongest earthquake that will happen in their lives. When we are overwhelmed, let us not forget God will never permit earthquakes that are more than what our system can carry. Question is, how will God know our capacity? Well, let us not forget, He created you and me, and He knows our composition, our measurements, and our abilities. Yes, if God permits very hard earthquakes in our lives now, maybe earthquakes in forms of problems, earthquakes in forms of discouragements, earthquakes in forms of failures, and many more things. That is because God wants us to continue hoping because where there is hope, there is the longing for a God and when that happens, God will surely be there for us. 
this is our newest devotional series, The Fervent Hope in These Tragic Times. Our topics are also based in the acronym FERVENT, and every day we will uncover one letter. Today, your online inspirational evangelist, Brother Noy Gonzaga, just opened the second letter in this word FERVENT, which is the first letter E, and that is EARTHQUAKE. May God bless us as we continue to remember that when things are almost impossible, let us stand firm and hope because hope is faith in action. Amen.